Hey everybody, John Rairden here for Nintendo World Report TV, bringing you Justin Nation's review of Implosion, Never Lose Hope, for the Nintendo Switch. I'll admit that when I first saw screenshots and information on Implosion, I had mixed feelings. While it all looked pretty impressive given its age and mobile-based lineage, I convinced myself that there would likely be some problem with it when it hit the Switch, whether in terms of performance or control. I've been burned too many times by Android mobile titles falling short in both departments on my Shield tablet, and I expected the same would happen here. I'm delighted to tell you that I couldn't be more wrong. Implosion needs few qualifiers when describing its overall quality. It is both great to look at and exciting to play. The story actually isn't half bad, though the general flow of narrative beats should be well known to sci-fi fans. Set in the future, an alien menace arrives, many people flee the Earth, and the main character is haunted by a figure from his past he left behind. The citizens return to Earth to check up after a few decades. Things aren't what they seemed, conspiracies and treachery, it all plays out fine, but it's also familiar. Thankfully, the voice acting and various ways that the cutscenes and dialogue are meshed together in the game all work nicely together, giving everything a degree of polish. Moving on to the main event, the cornerstone quality that will impress the most are the visuals. While you'll hardly mistake Implosion for a current-gen title, the fact is that it looks good, its action is fluid, and it sports some intimidating bosses in terms of their appearance and size. Your mech is often a blur of movement as you work your combos on enemies, but that isn't to say it's sloppy. Considering Implosion's roots are on mobile devices, the somewhat outdated overall look is no surprise, but in handheld mode you really won't notice at all. The great news, and most critical success, is that the control is spot on. This is an area where mobile conversions often stumble, but having played this with both the Pro Controller and the Joy-Con in handheld mode, you'd think it was developed with them in mind. You'll absolutely need the control to be tight and precise, because once things get rolling into the further chapters, you won't be able to simply spam your way through increasingly challenging enemies. You'll need to learn enemy attack styles, and how to best use a combination of your melee attacks, your guns, and elements in the environment to take them down. More critically, you'll have to remain very aware of the status of your health and shield, learning the best tactics for getting in some hits and then evading enemy counters in order to avoid taking massive damage in return. This need is the most pronounced in boss battles that conclude each chapter. The boss at the end of chapter 3 is particularly brutal to match up against. Even working your best to avoid its attacks the first time through, I'm pretty sure most people will need to use a revive to finish it off. The one major area where things do fall apart is tied to your abilities and how you make the best use of your enhancements available to you. There are three major skill areas where you can slot in two boosts that have a variety of effects. Some have to do with specialties, like a hacker skill that will allow you to get into several secret areas located in a variety of locations. Others will give you improved attack strength, or agility, or shield recharge rate. There's another distinct modifier you can change out that will add up to three special attacks to your arsenal. Some options may include a dash, some may break enemy shields, and some will do damage to multiple enemies in your vicinity. Unfortunately, in general, there's nothing to explain any of this very well, and you'll simply have to muddle through an experiment until you get the results that seem to work for you. There's an attempt to help you choose between the different enhancements, with indicators showing you what you'll gain or lose by changing them out with one another, but overall it could and should have been handled much more clearly. As you play, you'll acquire new abilities by killing enemies or finding them in boxes, but you'll also have an option to buy and sell them as you go. Again, you can generally intuitively figure out what you're supposed to do and which items are better to equip than others, but I still question whether I'm doing the best I can to equip my warrior for success. As a cherry on top of the engaging core campaign, there are also additional skill levels. Then there is the gun crazy additional story campaign I assume was originally an expansion. And finally, there's a badge system. As you play or replay levels, you'll be given objectives that will award you with a badge by completing them. Accruing a sufficient number of these will unlock special skills, as well as different sets of armor to play through the game with again. The fact is that for your initial cost of admission, if you enjoy the core mechanics, there's a lot of content that comes with a package for you to play through. Looking at the big picture, this is probably the most mainstream friendly indie title I've played on the Switch that I would anticipate will appeal to a wide audience. While not as deep as something you'd see from the likes of Platinum Games, the general gameplay hook is there combining fast-paced melee combo attacks with some gunplay and strategic combat. The fact that it's being delivered in such a budget-friendly package with so much content out of the gate more than compensates for the relative age and somewhat dated visuals it brings along for the ride. 
If you're looking for something to get your adrenaline pumping, whether you're at home or on the go, Implosion delivers a challenge and excitement in a wallet-friendly package. Thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to NWR TV for more Nintendo coverage and check out NintendoWorldReport.com. If you'd like to, you can also support us on Patreon at patreon.com slash NWR.